it does work. Hey everybody, I'm Patrick. Welcome back to Bikes and Briar, where I haven't really talked much about bikes. Pretty much only talked about Briar. But that'll change. This JM Boswell Black Cold Stout Pot was the last pipe I showed you guys about four months ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long already. In this video, we're going to talk about why it's taken this long to return to YouTube to make this video. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a new JM Boswell pipe that just showed up today. When I started this channel, I'll be honest, I thought maybe four people would be interested. I'm quite surprised and very grateful that over 400 of you have subscribed to my channel so far. A huge thank you to each and every one of you who supported this channel, liked my videos, and took the time to comment. I received tons of very helpful tips and tricks from many of you, which have saved me a ton of time. Really means a lot. Now, most of you know that I'm a rookie pipe smoker. I started getting into it back in February after having a conversation with a good friend of mine and also finding out that my grandfather who immigrated to the US from Scotland was also a pipe smoker. For three months straight from February until May, I was living and breathing, but mostly not inhaling, pipe smoking. I wanted to learn as much as I possibly could soak up as much information about the hobby as I could. I listened to Brian Levine's Pipe Magazine podcast nonstop while driving, listened to audiobooks, I read physical books, I was constantly researching and shopping for tobacco and pipes. I bought so much tobacco and my fair share of pipes too. And of course, I watched YouTube videos until my eyes bled. All manner of pipe smoking consumed me. Instead of blame it on the alcohol, blame it on the OCD. I was taking in all of this information, but I just couldn't find the time to actually sit down and smoke a pipe. It just wasn't easy for me to make time for it. And then I started to wonder if I just wasted a ton of time and money getting into this hobby. Right? Am I gonna have to find people to buy all this tobacco? Do I need to start thinking about selling my pipes to smokingpipes.com. These were the thoughts that were that started to go through my mind. I realized there's no way I could possibly see myself smoking enough to go through all the aromatics that I bought before they went bad. I'm a little less concerned about the English blends and the Virginias because from you know what I've heard they age pretty well and you can age them for a long time. That last video of that large tobacco haul, haven't even touched it, and it's been over four months now. After filming that last video, the very next day, I went on vacation to visit family in Boston. When I got to Boston, all of my focus suddenly went from smoking a pipe to exploring. I must admit, it was a refreshing change. It kind of snapped me out of my hyper-focused days. I suddenly had a lot of external stimulation and pipe smoking pretty much took a back seat. Well, sort of. As one would do in, in Boston, at least for a pipe smoker, you'd visit the second oldest brick and mortar tobacco shop in America, the legendary LJ Peretti. Now, if you haven't watched Adam Floyd's LJ Peretti video from Get Piped, you should. It's awesome. And while you're at it, subscribe to his channel. Him and his producer guy do a bang up job and create really nice content for the pipe community. Check them out. Before walking into LJ Peretti, I had these grand ideas about walking in and chatting it up with the owner, Steve Willett. <laughs> I'm laughing because the reality of it was that as soon as I walked in and saw Steve with a pipe expertly dangling out of the corner of his mouth and this natural scowl on his face. I was 
way too intimidated to say a word to him. I think, hi, was all I could muster. The guy was super intimidating. <laughs> During my visit, I sampled you know, a few tobaccos, um, which is a really cool privilege at LJ Peretti. He'll just let you sit there and sample whatever you want, and I think for as long as you want. I ended up picking up a few ounces of tobacco, along with a $2 Bic lighter since my Zippo was out of fluid. I ended up picking up uh, B94, which is a burly rum cabin dish. It's a very mild arrow. I picked up Park Square, which is a vapor. And I also picked up a Black Virginia, which is obviously an aromatic. And Steve crammed it all, all six ounces into this tin right here. Visiting LJ Peretti was a really cool experience and I'm really happy to say that I've been there and I smoked a pipe in a place that's been around for over 150 years. But I think I'm too green of a beginner pipe smoker to really, to have really appreciated it and appreciated it to its fullest. I wanted to go down to the basement, get a tour of the shop, meet the pipe maker, Todd Brugman, and as him and I exchanged a few messages before my trip. He was even gracious enough to uh, offer to give me a tour when I got there, but I just couldn't get the courage to ask when I got there. In some way, I didn't feel like I was worthy yet, so I didn't even bother him. Perhaps I'll go out there again you know, next year and, and make it the experience that I imagined. Anyway, while I was in Boston, I barely had time to smoke a pipe. I was running around everywhere. My family friend was taking me on sightseeing tours every day. And by the time we were done for the day, I was too wiped to smoke a pipe for an hour. Although after one especially beautiful evening after dinner in Newburyport, New Hampshire, um, I finally found some time and made smoking a pipe a priority. And I tried my hand at lunting while walking around downtown Ipswich. This Boswell pipe was the pipe that I smoked. For those of you following me who are possibly new to pipe smoking jargon, lunting is an English term for walking while smoking a pipe. I've got to tell you, I didn't really care for lunting. Um, don't get me wrong, it's, it's cool and I was having fun doing it. Maybe I'm just not experienced enough of a pipe smoker to do it well. I was way too focused on my new and exciting surroundings to be able to focus on the flavor nuance, nuances of the tobacco I was smoking, which happened to be GLP's Quiet Nights. A very appropriate tobacco for that evening, I have to say. Sadly, I just couldn't enjoy it like I was hoping. What I do remember from that blend was Latakia. It was only the second blend I've smoked which contained Latakia, the first being Peterson's My Mixture 965. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the campfire barbecue flavor of Latakia. Maybe if it was lightly sprinkled in the blend so you just got hints of it. I didn't mind it so much in 965, but uh, that was a pretty tasty blend. I'll have to revisit Quiet Nights again soon, but I can say with certainty that a Latakia forward bomb or a lat bomb, as the pipe community calls it, would definitely not be my cup of tea or bowl of tobacco, at least not right now. My taste buds have a lot of learning to do. Oh, I found one other evening to smoke. That time I smoked, um, I think it was Boswell's Northwoods, which is an English but it was late, it was pretty damn cold outside, so that smoke was really rushed. I didn't even come close to finishing the bowl. I ended up uh, dumping the unburned tobacco out in my friend's backyard garden. After a week in beautiful Ipswich, I flew to Atlanta to visit my dad. While I was there, I was busier than a one-legged dude in an ass-kicking contest. <laughs> I just, I couldn't find time to smoke a pipe. I smoked once really quickly with my dad while he puffed on a cigarette, but we weren't really relaxing. We were discussing the agenda for a busy afternoon. So again, 
I didn't get to enjoy it. When I got home from vacation, I had a lot going on. Projects were piling up. I had committed so much time to this hobby in those past three months that my other hobbies like motorcycling, cycling, cooking, playing the drums, petting my cat were being completely ignored. Well, except for my cat, I, I could never ignore her. I tried my hand at smoking in the car since I spend hours per day driving for work, but trying to navigate lighting the pipe, tamping, relighting while driving a manual transmission, for a beginner smoker anyway, can be tricky. I mean, sure, I can do it, but again, I was finding that I just wasn't enjoying it. I couldn't relax and enjoy it properly. I'm also extremely particular about the cleanliness of my car, and I really don't like the smell of my car after smoking in it, so I had to nix that. Interestingly though, when I smoked in my Miata, it's a little convertible, it left no trace of smoke, and that's with the top up and the window cracked for ventilation. I don't know. Luckily in my other car, the smell dissipated after a week or so, and you can't smell smoke in it anymore. It just smells like a normal clean car now, so I'm thankful for that. And thankfully, pipe smoke doesn't seem to stick to everything like cigarette smoke does. Anyway, I started wondering if I'm even capable of slowing down enough to make time for this. Every time I pack my pipe, it takes over an hour to smoke it. I'm on the go pretty much all the time. For me, to, it's, it's just a long time to sit down and do nothing. That's when I realized why so few people enjoy this hobby anymore. It takes time. It isn't easy, like a cigarette or a cigar is. It's, it's a slow, methodical process to smoke a pipe. Right when I was feeling like I was going to kick this hobby to the curb, I had a conversation with a good friend of mine, and I told him that I had just got into pipe smoking. And surprisingly, he told me that he was a pipe smoker too, but he had given it up years ago and got rid of all of his pipes. I was blown away. I've known this guy for 17 years, and I never knew that he smoked a pipe. I asked him if he wanted to give it a try and smoke with me, and he's like, hell yeah, let's do it. I just thought, cool, a friend who I can smoke with. This is awesome. All right, well, now this is getting interesting. Maybe this is exactly what I needed. I told my friend that the next time we hang out, I'm gonna bring a couple pipes and we're gonna do this. The next time I saw him, I surprised him by gifting him a new straight billiard. It was a Peterson Dracula that I saw, I thought would suit him well. We pulled out some chairs, sat in his back patio and smoked together for about two hours. I have to tell you, it was an incredible time together. We talked about every topic of discussion that came to mind. It was awesome. It turned out to be the very best smoking experience I've had to date. Thus, my interest in pipe smoking was rekindled. A week or so later, we got together to smoke again, and this time it was uh, pretty late in the evening and pretty cold outside, so he suggested we sit inside at his dining table while listening to some beautiful jazz music. This is the first time I ever smoked indoors. It was really cool. Again, we had an epic time. And that's when I realized I don't have to make time to do this solo. I can save it for moments when I can enjoy it with a good friend while we discuss all matters of life or just sit there and enjoy the silence together. I started to feel excited again about the hobby. So to celebrate, I bought a new pipe. And that brings us to this box from Boswell's. So let's crack it open and see what's inside. Cool thing about Boswell's is they always give you some pipe cleaners with tamper, book of matches, box of matches. And they also give you some tobacco, usually one ounce of something, and this is a new blend of theirs called Route 22. This is a black cherry billiard. Has the same black coal uh, rustication as the stout pot, which I found 
Gives an incredibly grippy texture, very easy to grip. There's no way this pipe is coming out of your hands. Beautiful amber stem. Just a straight billiard. Just a lovely, classic looking pipe. This is the third Boswell pipe I've picked up. I bought my buddy the second one, which is a beautiful freehand for his 80th birthday. And I'll show you uh, some pics of this pipe at the end of the video and show you how it compares in size to the Boswell Stout Pop. Please let me know in the comments if you guys enjoy these kind of pipe show and tells. I don't want to be the guy that's like, hey guys, check out my new pipe, if nobody cares. Well, that about wraps up this video. Thank you all for hanging out and catching up with me. I'll see you on the next one.